So Metformin got recalled again. Ugh. What's up guys? Welcome to another Sugar High Answering Your Questions video. This time from my office. I normally do these in my backyard just because I like to keep it, these kind of videos more casual and more conversational, just kind of winging it just between you and me. Uh, but uh, the days are getting shorter and by the time I get home, there will be no light left. So we're stuck here in my office if we're gonna get this done. Uh, so welcome to where I work. Uh, if you're new to Sugar High, my name is P.A. David. I'm a board certified and licensed diabetes specialty PA. I work in upper Los Angeles uh, County area. And these types of videos are where we get to talk back and forth. I love it when you guys post questions and comments on my videos because number one, it helps me to know that this information is actually getting out there to somebody and that's really encouraging. But the fact that you guys are thinking about your diabetes and wanting to know more about it and get clarity from uh, the information that's out there is really encouraging and it makes me excited to see how well you guys are doing. On one of my recent videos, I got a question from a Sugar High subscriber named Michelle that says, could you please do a video about the second round of metformin recalls? CVS told me that my pills were not part of the bunch, but I've stopped taking them for the last two weeks and my A1C is already starting to creep up. She mentioned that she usually runs about 5.8 and she was creeping up to about six. In that same comment, she also asks about the ADA recommendation of 7.0 being the goal for an A1C reduction. And I'm gonna address that in a different video. I wanted to speak mostly about the recall in this one. I am planning a whole video about what A1C goals ought to be and where the guidelines really come from. And I think that that kind of warrants its own conversation. So we'll cover that later. But in, in, in regard to Michelle's question about the recall, let's talk about that. By the way, Michelle actually has a YouTube channel of her own that you should probably go check out. It's called Tasting Positive. And it's kind of interesting because in that channel, she'll share some of her own insights and lifestyle tips in regard to her own experiences with diabetes. And she has a very interesting type of diabetes called Modi uh, that uh, she'll share with you a little bit more about. And if you wanna know the scientific uh, aspect of what Modi is, this video will kind of explain that. Um, but check her out for sure. I'll put a link to her channel in the description of this video. So let's talk a little bit about what is going on with this more recent recall that happened. Turns out this isn't actually anything new as much as it is an extension of an ongoing set of recalls that have been going on since earlier this spring. I actually covered this recall in a separate uh, newsflash video on this channel um, back in May when it first happened. So here's the whole story. Metformin is a generic drug, which means that it's not protected by patent and any pharmaceutical company can make it. When a medication is first produced, it has a 17 year patent life where only one company, the company that developed the medication is allowed to make it. But then after that, it goes generic and pretty much anybody can make it. So usually there's no problem at all when multiple different companies make a generic version of a pill. It's the same medication, but just in different shapes or different sizes and it's, it all works out fine. But once in a while, little impurities can end up in these pills. So the medication itself is fine. So that's an important factor to remember. This is not a problem with metformin. Metformin's fine. It's that a couple of companies that make metformin, when they were putting it into pill form, accidentally included this additional contaminant called NDMA. Okay, now that's not MDMA like ecstasy. Can you imagine if this was ecstasy? People would be lining up out the door for metformin, right? But this is NDMA, which is sort of like this byproduct chemical that gets created in all sorts of different industrial processes. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, NDMA is a commonly produced accidental byproduct of all sorts of different chemical and industrial processes. It's been found in drinking water. It's been found as a contaminant in medication. It's been found when they make tires. I mean, all sorts of different applications in industry can result in the accidental production of NDMA. But what it's not is something that's ever made on purpose. It's sort of just this byproduct that formation of chemicals can sometimes result in causing. And in this case, the FDA hasn't fully identified what the source of the production of NDMA was. So if a tiny bit of NDMA gets into your medication, why should we really care? Well, in animal studies, NDMA has been found to increase the risk of cancers. 
There's not been an actual human study because of what they learned in animals, but it's assumed that because it causes cancers in animals that it probably causes cancers in humans as well. But what they do know is that it would take a very high amount of NDMA over a long period of time to really cause cancer. A small amount over a short period of time is not that big of a risk. Not saying that you should go out and voluntarily try it, but if you accidentally get some here and there in some medication, it's not the end of the world. Back in December, the FDA announced that certain metformin tablets were found to have small amounts of NDMA in the pills, but they determined that it was such a small amount that it was not really worth doing anything about it. They didn't actually launch any kind of recall. They just said, you know, we found this, guys, be careful. It's not enough to harm anybody, but let's not keep doing this, okay? Well, fast forward to May of this past year, where five different manufacturers were found to have much higher concentrations of NDMA in their metformin pills. And in that recall, it was specifically 500 milligram metformin extended release tablets. No other formulation of metformin was affected. Then by July, seven more companies issued voluntary recalls. As a result of this May announcement, drug companies started looking at their own metformin. They're like, oh God, we've got some NDMA in there too. So they issued their own voluntary recalls. Another company was added to the list in August, and then just this past month, two more companies, one called Sun Pharmaceuticals and another one called Mark Sands, both issued voluntary recalls that their metformin also had unacceptable amounts of NDMA in their pills. So currently affected are certain lots from those specific companies of 500 milligram and now 750 milligram tablets of metformin, but again, still just the extended release version. What's not included in this? If you're on a thousand milligram pill of metformin, that is not part of this. If you're on an immediate release metformin, that is not part of this. If you take a combination medication where the metformin is combined with another medication like Janumet, for example, where it's Genuvia plus metformin combined into the same pill, that's not part of this. If you take Invokimet where it's Invokana and metformin combined into the same pill, that's not part of this, okay? Any kind of metformin plus another pill is not included in the recall. So you don't have to worry if that's the type of metformin that you take. So now that we know what's part of this, let's talk about what to do. First thing is, don't panic. On the FDA statement where they announced this recall, they said in that statement, people who are taking medications that are part of this recall should continue taking those medications until their doctor or pharmacy has replaced them with another medication. So don't feel like you have to immediately stop taking your pills because the risk of your diabetes going out of control is a greater threat to you than the small amount of NDMA that is in these pills. Again, I'm not saying that you should go out and take NDMA for the rest of your life. That would not be good for you. But in the short term context, the greater threat is actually gonna come from your diabetes. So keep taking your medications, call your pharmacy if you're taking extended release 500 milligram or extended release 750 milligram tablets of metformin and say, hey, I'm taking metformin. Can you please tell me if my pills were affected by the recalls? And they have documentation of the lot numbers that your bottle of metformin came from. And they'll be able to check it against the listed lot numbers and tell you you're fine or hey, come on, bring them back in. We'll get you some new metformin. All they really got to do is get you another bottle of metformin from a different manufacturer that's not part of this recall and you should be just fine. Another option is calling your doctor and if your healthcare provider chooses to change metformin to something else altogether, that's also a perfectly acceptable option. But what you don't need to do is panic. It's okay to keep taking your medications. It's better to keep control over your diabetes because if that's the greater threat to you than a small amount of contaminant, you gotta keep the big picture in mind here. I hope that that was a fair and helpful explanation of what's going on here and maybe gives you guys a little bit more insight into the best way to move forward. I don't like to minimize concerns, but I also like to keep context of what threats really are when threats do arise. So stay healthy, sugar high. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, do me a favor, click subscribe, click like. There's a lot of information on sugar high that I really hope that you'll find helpful and enjoyable. And I'll plan on seeing you guys in the next video.